Before we begin, I'd like to emphasize that this podcast is an extension of my surgical work and research at Visionary Eye Doctors. And thank you all for tuning in every week or multiple times to kind of hear our about our research and how we help patients. And thank you to all of you who have flown in from all over the world to see us here. So I'm very humbled by that. So it is my hope and desire to keep this information free to all of you, especially to my dear patients. And in keeping with this mission, we are very thankful to our first sponsor for the podcast wizard dry eye mask many of you have heard me talk about the wizard before i have loved this product for years it looks like this i have one right next to my bed so does my husband i used mine last night and even you know if i can't sleep i'll use it uh, it's a wonderful product that you just plug in next to your bed or even at your computer i've been known if i start to develop a style to do the wizard as i type and then switch you know if i have warm just like a warm compress so it works wonderful for that so thank you to the wizard if you mention our name uh, podcast visionary eye doctors dr kramers they'll give you a one-year guarantee if anything happens to the product just call them up and they'll replace it for you for free so thank you to the wizard research team for sponsoring this podcast enjoy Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers, one of the board certified surgeons at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you again for joining us for the EYE Show podcast. This week I had a couple of really interesting consults from patients from Hong Kong. I think one of them at least is going to fly in and we had a long conversation of what's the best protocol for this particular patient and what's the best protocol for you. And as I mentioned to him, everyone's a little different, but we all can agree on two things. Number one, there's no cure for dry eye disease because it's an inflammatory based condition that gets worse with aging. And number two is that if we do nothing, the glands will dry up. And so for those of you on YouTube, you'll see me kind of pointing to things and those that are listening on the podcast, which I do prefer you listen and close your eyes as I talk about in many uh, podcasts. The glands, of course, are supposed to look like these white piano keys. And as we get older, everything dries up. And when we first got the mybography and Lipaflow came out, and then eventually Tearcare, IPL, probing, we often, many of us, didn't know when to start treating. In other words, if a symptom was 10 out of 10, of course you would start treating. But what if the symptom was 0 out of 10 and somebody had no gland or very few glands left, would you treat? And that was always a question. So we've realized that we should not be like the old time dentists that wait till all the teeth fall out before we try to save the teeth. We want to save those glands as soon as we see any change because the fact is we all get drier. And so about, guess, 12, 13 years ago, uh, when I first came to this practice, I kind of, you know, had no dry eye issues. I, you know, started getting into dry eye mostly to help my cataract surgery patients and my glaucoma surgery patients. But it was kind of like a side thing that was never going to affect me because I'm so great with checking, you know, my glands and also doing the warm compresses. And everybody, everybody knows I love the wizard. I use it at least twice a day. I have right next to my bed. I put it on before I go to sleep. And if I wake up in the middle of the night, I'll put it on again. So I've been very, very good. Just like the dentists have perfect teeth, you know, the ophthalmologist technically maybe should have good glands, but obviously that's not the case. Uh, so I want to show you guys a picture of my upper glands. So my lower glands look good, but my upper glands, and I'll kind of put this on the YouTube, is drying up. And so it's because I used contact lenses for years and of course I'm getting older and I'm on the screens more than four hours a day and my blinking is, of course, I'm trying to do what I tell everybody. Talk with your eyes closed, use your eyes for eye-worthy things, blink, warm compresses when you wash your hands, wash your eyes. I've been doing that for years. Uh, save your contact lenses for contact lens-worthy events. Those kinds of things I still completely agree with. But with aging, I've noticed that yes, my eyes are getting drier and then in the winter, I've noticed I've had to literally, while I'm talking to patients, pinch my upper lids like I'm trying to push the oil out like I'm milking the cow. So my symptoms from going from zero out of 10 started to go to one and then to two. And when it got to two, I started freaking out. I was like, okay, this is not good. I am getting older, I'm feeling my eyes. So I've had Lipaflow and tear care over the years multiple times. But yesterday was the first time I had my first in intense pulse light IPL therapy. Dr. Alexa Padeda was the doctor who did it and it was excellent. She did a great job and it was very, very um, wonderful. I was actually surprised. So the one of the, I think the last time I had the full expression, I actually requested no anesthesia because I wanted to feel the worst it could feel. 
and it was definitely uncomfortable. With the lidocaine gel that we use during the procedure, which looks like this, and almost nobody's allergic to this. We haven't had really anyone have an allergy to this. Uh, it has no preservatives. It's very, very safe. It's an anesthetic. Uh, it really did was not painful at all, but granted, she didn't have to push that hard to get the oil to come out, which was golden colored and also kind of a olive oil consistency and some more globular. There was no toothpaste. And so when I'm having to push on those glands on patients and it's coming out very little or like toothpaste or nothing's coming out at all, it can be uncomfortable. So I want to go through today what the intense pulse light process was for me and how it felt and what I did after the procedure. So if you're about to have intense pulse light, I just want to reassure you it is a very safe procedure. The risks of it causing inflammation in the eye is close to zero. We have one patient that we are not even sure if it was really inflammation or just uh, irritation. And so it, really we haven't seen anything dangerous with intense pulse light. Uh, there is a patient, as I mentioned, who is African-American, the color of my black scrubs, who had intense pulse light three to four times and had no issues until that last time and then started to have depigmentation. And the reason why we did that is because we had tried everything, probing, uh, lipoflow, tear care, everything had been tried and eye peel was the only thing that helped him. And it did help, but then after the fourth time, I think it was, or third time, started to have discoloration of the eyelid skin. We stopped, of course, the IPL, started giving steroids, and the pigmentation came back. But we can't risk doing IPL on that patient uh, again. But for you, if you're not that dark colored skin, it generally can be very safe. So for me, we used the lowest setting to start. I did have the metal contact lenses put in. I was breathing through the whole process because it can be a little bit uncomfortable. And I did comment that I can understand how some people don't want to have the metal contact lenses because it can feel a little claustrophobic. And so we do have the metal shields also that we can use. We like the metal contact lens because it really prevents the light from getting into the pupil and therefore into the eyeball itself more thoroughly than the metal shield. But the next time I have the procedure, I might try the metal shield on one eye and the metal contact lens on the other eye or the cover, I should say, to see if there's a difference between the two eyes in terms of how much oil we get out, uh, how much discomfort it is in the whole process, and so forth. Some patients can't have the metal contact lens because they're just too irritated by it. Some patients with what's called anterior basement membrane dystrophy or map dot fingerprint or recurrent erosion syndrome <clears throat> may not be able to have that contact lens because it could disturb the cells. So if you have any of those conditions, let the doctor doing the IPL know, and then we would just use the metal kind of goggles. So the procedure of the actual light is very safe, minimal discomfort. It actually felt awesome. Uh, I have to say the gel, the cold gel we put on the eye felt really great. And so I was surprised actually it wasn't as uncomfortable as I thought it would be. And then the second part of the expression we put the lidocaine gel in and then Dr. Pereira and myself, I like to use those kind of thin Q-tips to kind of roll out the oil. Some doctors use a metal clamp. I've had that done on my eyes as well and I've also done that on patients and some patients will request that. So I'll tell patients, you know, as you go through the process of getting expression with different uh, doctors around the in this practice or in other practices, let us know what you prefer. I think the Q-tips are better because they roll out the oil like you're milking a cow more evenly. And so I think that kind of mimics more of what we're really trying to do. But the clamp is cold so it can feel better in some patients. So I keep that in mind. Okay, so what was the things that happened afterwards? So afterwards, uh, we washed out my eyes. It was blurry for a few, uh, I would say for me, it was about blurry for a few minutes. I was able to drive home without a problem. I didn't have any light sensitivity afterwards. I did go to the bathroom afterwards and wash it out even more. And so for going forward, I might mention to patients to do that. We do give to patients an instruction sheet, which kind of goes through what to expect. And so a couple things I would add to this. So after the procedure, I went to the bathroom, I washed my eyes with some cool water, a little bit of warm water, but then cool water, the cool water felt very good. And then when I got home, I did start feeling crusting, which I was kind of surprised by because I have told patients this, but I want to remind patients that the oil, as we're pushing out that oil, it does have inflammatory factors, especially if the oil is coming out like white toothpaste or it's serous, not golden. When you hear me say the word golden or yellow, but really golden, then it really means it has the least amount of inflammation. But even then there are inflammatory cells in that 
oil. And so after the IPL, you might feel crusting. And so you want to really wash that crusting off. It's inflammatory cells. And so the IPL does kill Demodex mites. It does liquefy the oil. It does open the orifice and it does decrease inflammation. So the death of the mites and also the inflammatory cells that are released from the inside of the meibomian gland during the expression can lead to crusting. So if you have crusting ever, especially after a procedure, wash it off with warm water, keep it clean because those inflammatory cells can clog the orifice of the meibomian gland in the future and lead to a sty. So the most dreaded side effect of intense pulse light, aside from the extremely rare case of inflammation in the eye called uveitis, is a sty, but a sty has a good part and a bad part. The bad part is, of course, it's kind of inflamed and the orifice is blocked and the oil can't come out when you're blinking. But the positive part me is that it means that the oil is starting to produce more. It's actually revving up. And that's a wonderful thing. So when we express a sty after an intense pulse light procedure, for instance, we see a lot of oil coming out. It's really lovely because we know that that gland is functioning and we can now clear it out and let that oil start running and getting better as you milk it more. So that's actually a good thing in a way, but you don't want to get the full sty that becomes a scar tissue called a chalazian. So after the IPL, Cool compresses first, then warm compresses, usually about two hours after, depending how your skin is doing. If you have very sensitive skin, you might want to give it a little bit more time. Some people will wait till the next day. I really like to do a little bit of cool compresses for about maybe 10, 15 minutes, depending on how much it's hurting or irritated. And then about an hour or two later, the warm compresses, milking, gently rubbing up and down side to side on your eyelids or pinching or pushing. You're trying to milk the oil continuously at home. So I did use tea tree oil last night, which I, as you guys know, I'm a fan. Again, this is my trusty bottle that I tip over. I take the top and whatever's in the top with my clean finger. I just use that to just gently clean my eyelids. I will sometimes wait a couple of seconds if I have time before I wash it off. Sometimes I don't even have to wash it off completely, but generally I do. And it's minimal, very minimal. So this bottle really can last about a year. And I don't think there's any expiration date on tea tree oil at all. And there is not. Okay, so I use that. And and we do recommend to patients to use either their platelet-rich plasma that's preservative-free or their autologous serum, which is preservative-free because those are anti-inflammatories. I prefer those over steroids, but steroids are also an option. So steroids are an anti-inflammatory we like to use after the procedure to just keep the inflammation low so you don't have a eventual sty or even a clogged orifice after you've invested your time uh, and, and of course the money to do this procedure. So for me, I wanted to just kind of do everything naturally to just see how it felt. So I didn't use a steroid and I got home so late I didn't use, I didn't even use my platelet rich plasma, but my eyes feel great. They, they are not uncomfortable at all. I had crusting again this morning, so I really washed it off and I used my tea tree oil again this morning. If I were to get a sty, the first thing I would do is run, get a hot pot of water without burning, um, my skin, I would put my finger, put it over the bump like a hundred times a day as much and then pinch, 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 which I've had to do in the past before. I've never had a sty after any of these procedures, but I've uh, had a sty once when my hot water heater broke, but uh, that's that's about it, but it can happen. So if that happens, and then the prescription for Neopolydexa we will give you if you get a sty, so you can request that if you know you're prone to get those. So those are the key things you want to do. And then of course, staying out of the sun is a really important thing. Uh, you might get a little hemorrhage from the procedure, which will usually clear in about a week. That can happen just from the pushing or like touching of the conjunctiva. Uh, if you have any swelling or black and blue areas on the eyelid, it can be from the expression because the oil was so stubborn or stuck that the doctor had to put a lot of pressure to get the oil to come out. So keep those things in mind about what to expect after the intense pulse light. And then the question we often get is, do I need another one and when should it be? So the answer to that really depends on the quantity and quality of the oil we see. And that's why we like to videotape a lot of our expressions and your symptoms. 
So those two things. And the third thing is how much your eyes are open and how many hours you're on the screen. So I tell patients it's like your expensive car. If you don't use that expensive car, you don't need an oil change four or five times a year. If you're using that expensive car every single day for many, many hours a day, expect to change out that oil sometimes five to six times a year. This is the same thing. If your eyes are closed and you're blinking and you're really only using your eyes for eye-worthy events, you may not need this again. You can do just the warm compresses and the massaging. And we have many people that have one only IPL and don't need it again. I mean, do you need it or not? It can be a relative question, but they don't feel like they need it because they can get their symptoms under control. And we'll repeat the myography usually about every year to make sure there's no gland loss. And that kind of determines where, what you need. Most patients need about six IPL sessions to get to the olive oil stage. And when I say olive oil, I mean golden looking olive oil that we gently push and that gushes out. So if you're not at that stage or your doctor says it's coming out like toothpaste, think about all the natural things you can do, which we've talked about. And please check out step two on the podcast that goes through all the natural things you can do. And then, of course, the warm compresses, the blinking, patching one eye at the screen, taking turns, use one eye for screen stuff. Uh, and then, of course, your warm compresses. And then IPL usually will do it somewhere between two weeks to sometimes a few months, depending on the symptoms. So the doctor will kind of go through that with you. For me, I'm probably gonna get another IPL in about four months, only because I know that I feel great right now, but as I use my eyes and as winter, you know, kind of continues, my eyes will get dry again. And I do want every gland to come out like olive oil. So that's where I will be in four months. So I hope you found this podcast helpful. Please pass it on, please subscribe. That helps our research. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.